two years ago, I went temporarily insane. It wasn't because I had taken any drugs, and it wasn't because I had a previous mental illness. The issue was, the reason was unexpected. I had just had a baby. Maternal mental health is an issue that affects us all. We were all born to mothers, and our early relationship with them impacts the way that we develop and interact with the world around us. Postpartum issues are more common than you think. Postpartum depression, for example, affects one in seven women that give birth each year. Yet no one likes to talk about it. If we can move past the stigma and start an open dialogue, mothers and their babies will be better off. I'm Lisa Abramson, and I'm a survivor of a severe condition called postpartum depression and psychosis. So let me tell you what happened. I've always been a confident and ambitious person. Successfully, uh, I pursued a successful career as a marketing executive, and then most recently as an entrepreneur. And by the age of 30, I was ready to take on my next challenge, motherhood. People often describe me as one of the happiest people they know. And in my business and executive coaching practice, I even teach people how to live happier and more fulfilled lives. I had always prided myself on my mental fortitude and my self-sufficiency. So as you can imagine, I was blindsided by what happened to me after the birth of my daughter. On January 5th, 2014, I gave birth to my perfect daughter, Lucy. I loved her immediately and with all my heart. The outpouring of love I felt for her, it was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. But within a few weeks, I started to know that something wasn't right. I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror. I wasn't the happy and vibrant woman that I was used to seeing. I was in a deep fog. I was exhausted. I felt defeated. I even stopped seeing my friends in addition to crying all the time. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't want to admit that something was wrong. I thought, I love my daughter. I love her so much. I couldn't be suffering from postpartum depression. I thought that, that was something that only affected moms who had trouble bonding with their babies. But as my sleep deficit grew worse and the weeks went on, I started to get more and more confused. Like a night when I thought my sleeping eye mask was my baby daughter, Lucy. Or then a couple nights later when I couldn't figure out how to put together the pieces of my breast pump, even though I had used it already dozens of times. But then one night, things got really interesting. I thought I saw spy cameras outside my window looking in on me in my bedroom and that there were snipers up on the roof and that the police were coming to get me for a crime that I was wrongly accused of. And I thought any minute now, just any minute, the police were going to come and bust through my front door and take me away. In other words, I had lost my mind. By the time that my daughter was one month old, I was so confused and defeated, and I felt a constricting guilt at being unable to care for her and be the mom that I wanted to be. I thought she would be better off without me, and I thought the only thing out was to go to the Golden Gate Bridge and jump off. This is what moved my family from worried into action that saved my life. I ended up spending 10 days in the psychiatric ward of the hospital while my family and the doctors patiently waited for the Zyprexa, the Clonopin, and the Zoloft to stabilize my mind. And let me tell you, a psych ward is not a fun place to hang out, 
In case anyone was wondering, uh, the walls aren't padded, like you might have seen in the movies, but you're definitely locked in there and you cannot get out. And I know this because I tried to escape. I can laugh about it now, and it's okay, you can laugh too. <laughs> um, and, um, but at the time, I felt so defeated. Everything from taking the strong medications to being locked up made me feel like a complete and total failure. Even admitting that I had postpartum depression and psychosis, it felt like it was saying something like, I wasn't good enough as a mom. I wasn't sacrificing enough. And the list goes on and on. When I got out of the hospital, I made a commitment to myself and my daughter that I would not only get through this, but I would get stronger and more resilient in the process. Thankfully, I've been able to make a full recovery and no longer need to take any medication. I'm successfully pursuing my career and I have a wonderful relationship with my family, my husband, and my daughter. When I made that commitment to do whatever I could to be both stronger and more resilient, I turned to anything that would help, including meditation, prioritizing my sleep, and learning how to let go of trying to do everything. I'm a survivor because I got help early. Thankfully, my condition was very rare. Only one to two out of every thousand moms that give birth experience postpartum psychosis. Postpartum depression, on the other hand, is one of the most common complications from childbirth, yet no one is talking about it. When untreated, women, mothers that have postpartum depression, they're less able to bond with um, and interact with their children properly. But here's the thing. When treated, when women go and ask for help and then seek the help and get it, it's not only tr it's treatable and it doesn't need to be something to be ashamed of. That's why I'm here today sharing my story. Because sadly, only 15% of moms experiencing postpartum depression ever receive professional treatment. And I think we can do better. Too many moms are suffering in silence because of the shame and the stigma associated with maternal mental health disorders. This is not a mom's issue. This is an everybody issue. And you can do two things, two simple things right now to start the conversation so that these moms feel less alone in their suffering. The first thing you can do is when you interact with new moms, be sympathetic to their concerns and be willing to take an active role in, their, um, in helping them. Because trust me, they're gonna be tired and overwhelmed and any help that their support system can give them will be amazing. I even now tell all of my pregnant friends to go and seek a therapist while they're pregnant before they have the demands of a newborn in front of them. The second thing you can do is share this talk and start a conversation. Together we can make it safe to talk about maternal mental health. And if you're a mom out there hearing this, and suffering, I want you to know these five important things. One, it is not your fault. Two, you're not alone. Three, there's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. Four, this doesn't make you a bad mom and it has nothing to do with how much you love your child. And five, you will get better just get help right away. Thank you.